Hey guys, I uh, hope you're well. Um, so obviously Fantasy Game Week 1 is, is over and of course it was an interesting time for us, um, especially people who kind of, I, I guess, closely followed some of the teams that we created. I think we did extremely well this week. Um, so, so right now, as you can see, we, we did finish roughly top 27,000, top 26,000. Uh, a lot of people who had similar teams as mine and, and, and took um, on the advice in terms of Ben Rama, I think it really paid off. Um, in terms of Salah and Fernandez, you know, I was never a Bruno player. So I, I can honestly say I, it, it just doesn't make any sense to me to not go with Fernandez. I think the fixtures are too nice. Um, yes, you can build value as much as you want uh, in your team, but ultimately relying on clean sheets from a lot of players, um, with the exception to potentially Chelsea this week, as I mentioned, that, that could be a good option. Um, didn't really make sense. And with Havertz, of course, um, him being injured in game week one, didn't really make sense to punt on him. Uh, I think a lot of people who went for it alone, so that was a bit, you know, that was very kind of daring, I would say, because I I, I thought Chilwell could come in, which is why I didn't really want to tr try that. And then I thought, you know, if I go Rudiger, maybe I only get Rudiger for one week. And, and, and that was a question mark for me. Um, I think but when, when I look back at the team, when I look back at the points that we've made, um, you know, Simicast delivered as much as we wanted. I, I definitely thought Amarty would deliver on game week one. But my my thinking was that I thought Digne would deliver similarly. And, and to be honest, I have to shout out Michael Keane for absolutely ruining my Everton clean sheet. Well played to that. Um, very frustrating, to be honest. But I think the, the game... And, and also Luke Aving's super goal. I mean, fair enough for him for <laughs> scoring such a wonderful goal. But I think this game week literally went as well as it could have. Um, Antonio missed the penalty as well. But I think we made the right picks. And you know, when I look into game week two, which was my initial pl plan, you know, the point of this team is to create almost a set-and-forget team for the season. Um, the way I saw West Ham and Leeds players is that they're actually quite interchangeable, you know. But West Ham simply have better fixtures, so I have a bit more faith in West Ham to start the season. I could change my mind on that. I could change some players in the future. But my plan really is to either, one, uh, transfer Digne out this week. And I'll have a close thought about some of the teams that really interest me and some of the defenses that interest me. Because we saw Cresswell score a goal. But as I explained, I don't really want to triple up on West Ham right now. Uh, they do have Leicester coming up next, which I think for some people would be a scary fixture. But I wouldn't be scared. You know, West Ham did a very good job last season round versus Leicester. And, and I think they can do... Well, again, uh, my question mark really is on Digne. Not because Everton's defense is poor, but it's just they still ultimately are going to be facing Leeds, which, you know, Leeds can really score a goal out of absolutely anything. You know, so even if Everton are going to take a lead, maybe we say Digne take an assist, take um, takes a goal even. Um, it, it's still risky for me, and I think that's the worry there. Can I already start to change my team um, because basically one of my worries as well is, is, is not on player performance, but just the fact that I think there could be um, an opportunity, I think, for Jurgen Klopp to maybe bench Simikas in game week three, even if Ra Robertson isn't fit, right? Because I, I think Simikas did offensively a, a wonderful job versus Norwich, but his one-on-one -on -one defending was a bit lackluster. I know everyone was kind of looking at the Rash, uh, the Rashika kind of like um, dribble and, and him kind of getting dummied by that, but... You know, there's a genuine fear there that I think Klopp might not have him in game week three. And obviously, as you can see, as weak as my bench is, there's no way I can really compete with teams um, who have a more well-rounded team at the back. So the plan really is probably to save transfer so I can alleviate that situation. You know, Digne could drop into a 5.0. Simakas can drop into a 4.5. The question, of course, is do I already want to move Digne already? Um, or do I want to change things around? Because to be honest, I'm, I am I feel like this front line is still, uh, until at least after game week three, uh, set and forget. You know, I might change Ings after game week three. The fixtures are going to be tough. And I don't think I'm, I'm so high on Aston Villa. I thought Buendia had a rather rusty performance, but I really like the performances of Bailey and things like that. So I wouldn't really touch him until he really gets to play versus these nice fixtures. You know, we were always targeting Newcastle. Brentford, I think, has actually become very interesting. So... Um, Brentford for me really appealed to me as a defensive side and Brentford have a fantastic record, you know, uh, when they're kind of, um, in, in terms of the next few game weeks. So if I kind of look at transfers and I look at someone like Pinnock, for example, I'm not saying that I'm definitely going to go for Pinnock. I'm actually kind of interested in some other, uh, potential defenders, but you know, we're really saying that these are nice fixtures. Crystal Palace, probably going to be a clean sheet. Wolves could be a clean sheet. Brighton, Aston Villa, a little bit less sure on that, but... Still, they're playing Brighton at home. 
very good opportunities for I think Brentford to become one of those teams where even um, where we can actually really consider kind of finding different assets uh, for that sort of side and and, and moving away from maybe Simicas you know in, in a precautionary way because I think we've you know by the end of game week two we would have gotten the full potential out of Simicas and then the question is do I have the type of team to field versus most sides. In terms of digging, I mean, if I'm looking for a double transfer, there's also opportunities for me to go for a 4.5 and then an Embuemo, you know, um, and um, or or Embuemo rather, because Embuemo is 5.5. I think it's an interesting kind of. He's an interesting player because he's clearly out of position, and for me, I really like the kind of performance he had versus Arsenal. He needs to work on his clinicalness, but he could be a very exciting option. Especially for some of the sides that he, he gets to face, you know, before game week six, and we've got plenty of opportunity to use the absolute most of Mbemo before we even maybe wild card to adjust for that kind of Chelsea fixture run. Uh, so that's kind of my thoughts right now. I, I think the team, you know, attacking wise is mostly set and forget. Only plans really are to think about either transferring Digny, and I'll update you guys as the week goes on. Let's not kind of knee jerk to anything. I think we had a wonderful start, to be honest. Um, and that's that's how I really feel about things right now. Omo Bamidele is someone I, I deliberately picked because I think Amarte was going to be f kind of benched out of the team. And I thought Amarte didn't have the gr uh, the greatest of games versus uh, Wolves himself. So I can really see Leicester reverting to a back four, continuing that structure. And then Amarte kind of being shifted out for Westergaard. And in, the, in that si situation, I think Amarte's value is completely lost and, and he might start to lose value. Whereas someone like Omo Bamidele has no selection. I mean, he can easily um, give me one or two points each week, right? Obviously not the nicest fixtures, but at least he'll be a playing 4.0 defender. Simakas, I think, also could be rotated out versus Chelsea, but otherwise I still think he's an interesting option to have. Um, so those are my thoughts really right now in terms of my team. We can also have a look at, you know, just for fun, the highest points team of the week. Um, triple captain being played. Very, very similar team to us. The only difference between Pereira and Richarlison I think Richarlison had a great game versus Southampton, but I think Southampton is definitely a team that we want to be attacking, right? Um, I don't really think Richarlison had a standout performance. I, I thought Southampton looked very poor at the back. They just lost Vestergaard as well, which is huge. Pereira, I think, as I mentioned in the Community Shield game and in my team selection guide, that I think he will be a very interesting 5.5 to look at. And kudos to this guy for um, actually going for uh, Pereira to start the season. But I still think Pereira has some very, very tough fixtures, guys. So I wouldn't be super high on Pereira right now. We're talking Man City. We're talking West Ham even next week. A nice little fixture in Norwich. But, you know, ultimately, maybe not so many opportunities to get clean sheets. Uh, if we're talking about, let's say, Richarlison, I think he has wonderful fixtures, to be honest. But I actually think Dominic Harvey-Lewin had similar kind of um, kind of chances to score, and I think there's possibility there that we can actually look at Dominic Calvert Lewin as a threat. What I liked about Everton is that they changed things up in the second half, and I'll talk about that in in a, in a kind of game week video where I recap some of the best performers and 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 whether we should knee jerk into them. Um, some of the I think interesting defenders, of course, is Craswell, who of course scored a goal today. Um, I mean, ultimately. Uh, Due to, you know, as I mentioned with my selection process, I, I wasn't 100% sure about getting all the West Ham players possible. Um, you know, we don't really want to be too deep into West Ham right now, in my opinion. I think two is enough, um, attack-wise especially, because I, I think there's there's a high possibility that they don't keep, keep many clean sheets. I mean, right now, the way they're beating teams is simply outscoring them, and there's nothing wrong with that, you know, but it's just about... If you have, let's say, Cresswell or or, your, or some players who have actually had Sufal, you can see Sufal obviously didn't do exceptionally well today. And and you can't say that, oh, there's an argument that Newcastle could have not scored any goals because simply Newcastle were, did find it, I will say, quite easy to score their two goals. Um, and there's mistakes in this West Ham defense. You know, it's not a strong defense. Whereas, for example, when you look at the Everton game, there was one huge mistake caused by an Everton defender himself. Whereas the, the rest of the game, I don't think Southampton built many effective chances. So... When we're talking about looking at teams and looking at results, let's not be too 100% um, in, in on knee-jerking defenders just because they kept a clean sheet. Because, like, you look at Man United as well, I think Varane's going to come into the side. I don't even think, you know, it's it's the fact that Lindelof was playing that, you know, Ailing scored a super goal. So so things like that you have to kind of take into account and, and not go too knee-jerky in, in terms of the defenders. But definitely, I think the only kind of pure weakness in my team is... The money invested into DNA, it could be better well spent. We could think about that um, later as the week goes on. As I said, I'm quite high on Brentford defense. Uh, I mean, we're even talking the keeper could be interesting. Raya, you know, Raya here. 
uh, had a wonderful kind of week. He didn't have to make many saves, but I think when he was called upon to make a good save, he did do that versus Arsenal. And, and when you look at the expected goals uh, kind of um, conceded statistic for Brentford, Brentford were actually, I think, the lowest in the championship. And the fact that they actually upgraded on two of their players in terms of Ayer and, and uh, someone whose name is eluding me right now, I think Brentford become a very interesting option. But, you know, we, we now get to have Sun who, who really pops off first Man City. And I was telling you guys in this live stream, I was either between Greenwood or Sun. And, and, and if you watch the game with Man, Man United, I, I thought Greenwood actually had opportunities to get one goal, one assist. Like that would have been fair for his performance. He didn't end up getting that. He got one goal, which is fine. And Sun obviously did even better for us. And I was telling you guys that Sun made a lot of sense because Sun has always been an absolute threat to Man City. He scored, I think, seven goals in 14 games, whereas someone like Harry Kane has scored two in 13. And, you know, Sun is a tremendous player to play versus Man City. Um, he really attacks them hard in terms of being able to kind of beat them, um, you know, by running past the shoulder of a defender. He didn't really do that today. He had actually quite a few opportunities to score a few finesse goals. And he had three... I think strong opportunities to actually do that. Obviously, one of them was a goal, and, and 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 I'm happy with that because he was playing versus a top defense. And as I mentioned, in terms of attacking Man City, like Man City didn't play stones because he he was clearly probably tired and fatigued, and and you could see the same reason for I guess why Tuchel didn't play someone like Chilwell. And you know, congratulations as well to players who punted on Alonso. I was a bit worried about that because I thought Chilwell would play after Alonso had so many minutes versus VRL, but that's the situation we're in. Uh, ultimately, I think it was a fantastic game week. If you're asking me about my immediate plans, it's just about thinking about uh, how I can change this defense around. How do I kind of prevent myself from maybe shooting myself in the foot in, in game week three when Simakas is a bad fixture? Because in that kind of game week, I'm probably planning just to have Trent in my team. Uh, and, and that's really it for now. I think um, it was a fantastic game week for us. I think let's not knee jerk. Um, if you have similar teams, if you have any kind of questions in the comments, feel free to drop them below. But as the week goes on, I will be updating my team selection guide and I will be kind of uh, giving you my additional thoughts in terms of players who would be interesting to look at. As I mentioned, you know, someone like Mbemo will definitely f feature on that list. And I wouldn't need jerk into all the players possible. Because if we look at price changes as well, you know, Pogba, I mean, is literally about to hit 7.6 tonight. And I wouldn't say he doesn't deserve it because, I mean, he had a wonderful game. And I can understand why a lot of casual players will knee jerk into him. But let's be reasonable about it. You know, Pogba Bob was not going to find our way into our sides. I, I actually think Greenwood has another good uh, game week three and four probably in him uh, before, let's say, Ole changes his tactical structure around. I can probably see him playing a very similar team to last week. Uh, and instead of maybe Daniel James playing Sancho instead, you know, that could be the starting lineup of Man United right now because we don't exactly know the situation with Cavani. And I think clearly Martial has kind of dropped in terms of pri his priority and his place in his team. Um, in terms of Watford, actually, you know, we're looking at price rises right now. I thought Dennis and, and Saar had fantastic games. So, um, as I mentioned, you know, Ben Rama for me was a priority 6.0 and he proved the point there. Uh, but Saar is a very interesting 6.0 player as well. If you already have Ben Rama and, and for some reason your structure allows for another 6.0 midfielder, Saar is very interesting for me. Um, Dennis becomes an interesting forward at 5, but as I mentioned as well with Aston Villa's defense, it, it, it it's going to... It's going to change a lot substantially this season because they tried to change formation. They're adapting from losing Grealish and they have to incorporate three or four, or even five new players. We saw Matt Target being subbed off because he had such a poor performance versus Saar, leading to Ashley Young coming in. And then, for example, if you have someone like Target now, like even his possession pos position in the team could be under threat. You know, a lot of things like that could be interesting uh, for us. And if, if we're looking at anyone else in price rises, as I mentioned, Cobb Lewin's interesting. I wouldn't really touch the Leicester players because they do have tough fixtures ahead. Um, Sar, as we can see, has been recognized here. And I think, you know, as I mentioned, for all the players who had 4.5 players in their team, Ailing makes a lot of sense. I mean, he scored a super goal, so let's not get too high on that. But it's just more the fact that I think Leeds does have opportunities in the later game weeks to cover for bad fixtures, right? Game week three, they have a nice little fixture, um, much better than Ben White, for example, in game week three, who gets to play versus, um, I believe, Man City. So, you know, Ailing is a, a nice player to kind of cover for Simicas. If, if we if we want to even think about that, if I, if I if I decide not to go for any kind of uh, Brentford players, and I must say on Jota as well, I mentioned that Jota would be an interesting player to score a goal, but you know, uh, Trent arguably you know got underperformed underperformed I would say versus Norwich, but the key thing is he sat and forget right um, at least for now, and and we already see at least a template for Liverpool to get clean sheets. I think their defense looked great. Fabinho kind of really improved things in the side. 
Don't know how Norwich didn't end up scoring, which was amazing for us. That was like an additional 10 points that we really needed. But when we're talking about Jota, I, I thought Liverpool's per performance really improved after Firmino came into the side. So I would really like to say that I think I would be a little bit less uh, high on Jota uh, in, in the future because I, I really think Firmino can reclaim his spot in the team. In terms of other players right now, um, I actually think, you know, Spurs have a very interesting defense. Tanganga really impressed me, not as an offensive player, but defensively. And that gives me a little, little bit more hope with uh, Romero and potentially another centre-back coming in, that this side could be great. And, we're, and and then we would be targeting someone like Regalon at 5.0. And that that's an opportunity for me to, for example, go 4.5 and 5.0, right? So those are my immediate thoughts right now. I wouldn't necessarily make a direct translation from, let's say, Digne to another Chelsea defender. They have tough fixtures. Uh, because that would really be the only 5.5 I'd be looking at, as I'm not um, super keen on doubling up on Man United and also going for Cresswell right now. But those are my thoughts. Um, I thought it was a wonderful game week. I hope you guys had a wonderful game week as well. Um, and, and and yeah, I mean, let's um, let's kind of take a, a patient approach. Wonderful start to the season. Um, and, and let's keep moving, guys.